So we're in as root. Let's check that the partition's been mounted. It has. We've got CLFS active for the root, so that's okay. Let's go into CLFS. Again, check that CLFS is active, and it is. So I think we can start building the system. In fact, let's look at all the variables that have been set. Yeah, there's this host and target are the most important ones. So you can see the host currently is a 32-bit and we're targeting a 64-bit. So what the first stage is in Chapter 5.2, um, yeah, and I didn't want this video to be particularly about how CLFS works um, as the whole series is more about um, building different versions of Linux from scratch and arguably this is a different version of Linux from scratch, just a slightly different version, like one of the siblings of Linux from scratch. Um, we'll just sort of go through and just lightly explain what's going on. So this first chapter five, we're going to be building a compiler that's capable of cross-compiling. Um, so that's effectively what we're doing in chapter five. So we'll start off with file, where are we, pwd, let's change the clfs sources, okay let's just check we've still got xz which we should have, yep we have that's fine so let's now get on with building some packages, so we start with file configure it. You can see that all these tools go into the cross tool. So this is the compiler, the cross uh, compiler tool chain that we're building now. Build it and install it. So we should have our first package in cross tools. Uh, there you go. There's file. So next package we've got is Linux headers. Oops. So we once again patch it to bring it up to the current version that CLFS uses. Then we clear the source directory, run this check. And what's it say? Use suppose cannot reference functional variable defined in the kernel. Okay, maybe that's something missing. Uh, whoops. And we install the headers. Okay, so M4 next. Okay, it's M4 done. And now we build N curses. So there's only one program that's needed. Here. Now, when I saw this, I thought this was an error with all these stars, but it's not. It's just saying that it's making a change by the looks of it. OK. 
Okay, install that one program. Package config light. Um, right, so GMP. Now, as a notice, notice uh, note here saying that if you are building with a host which has 32 bit user space with a 64 bit capable CPU, Cross Tools GMP will attempt to link with 64 bit libraries. Add the following to configure during configure to force the GMP's ABI. So I did try it without this and it still did seem to build. Um, correctly but I'm not going to take a chance so I'm going to use that uh, ABI equals 32 to force it to use 32 bit and put the rest in So, um, so when I ran it before, it out it did come up with 32 ABI, but uh, it's not worth taking the risk. Okay, that's done. Right, MP4 done. So MPC. ISL, so this is the first of two packages that I believe enhance GCC in some way that I don't really understand that the standard LFS doesn't use.
Okay, so let's now install that. That's done. Next we've got Klug. So cross spin utils. Okay, that's taken 1 minute 35. When I compiled this on the Pentium 4, it took 2 minutes 43. So it's about 60% of the time, roughly. So it is substantially faster, this uh, machine. So that's good. Uh, make install. Uh, one thing I forgot to check was the amount of free space that's available. Um, the free memory, rather. So let's tidy this up and I'll just double check that. I'm sure it would have um, changed because of the setting that I did. So if I type free, yeah, I've got 16 gigabytes now available. Not linearly, but certainly available in chunks. And yeah, top confirms that as well. So I've already used 300 megabytes as it is. Uh, just idling, that's probably a cache. Yeah, a lot of it's cached there. So that's good. So the reason why I just thought of that is because the next uh, package GCC, which uh, is likely to use up a fair chunk of memory during the compile, although I've only got two cores, so it probably wouldn't have a, a big hit. Uh, I was just thinking while that was extracting that, I don't think I've set 
um, make flags for no the CLFS user and got make flags. So what I'm going to do is if I'll carry on. Uh, let's just change into GCC. Uh, set that in the bash RC. Make flags equals minus J2 and source bash RC right okay so that should help improve the speed of things So temporary build directory got big configuration here and we build a package with this command. Let's see how long this takes on here. So I guess this will probably take um, seven to eight minutes judging by the timings I've seen.
Okay, well, that's a lot quicker than I expected it to be. Five, four minutes, that is. Uh, that's pretty good. That's uh, about a third of the time of the Pentium 4. Um, which is what I expected with timings to be between um, for the Pentium 4 Dublin three times, so that's about right. So let's now install these two targets. Move on to glibc. So as a fix here, we build a temporary directory. Disable SSP. Configure the build and build it. So again, the expectations here, or well, it took 18 minutes, so I guess somewhere between six and nine minutes, really.
Okay, so there you are. That's taken just under six minutes, so that's pretty good timing. Yeah, let's install that. So that was GDBC. Okay, that's done. Let's tidy that up. And now we build the cross GCC, the final version. So I've got a couple of patches, again, similar as before. Oh, that isn't copied. I'm just going to check that. Uh, the tail. Yeah, that's worked correctly. There's that tools lib in prefix one and just a empty string for prefix two, so that's fine. Temporary build directory again and the complex configuration. And now we build it. So this should take about seven minutes or so, I guess.
Okay, that's done in six minutes. Let's install that. And that's done. So in theory, we should have a compiler that's capable of cross compiling now. And we we'll use that to build some basic tools in the next chapter, chapter six.